Welcome, everyone, to the latest edition of the Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. You're watching Adam the Bull on the Bet Rivers Network. If you're not using the Bet Rivers app, what are you doing? Get the latest lines on Major League Baseball, the Olympics, tennis, and more. Plus, win totals in the NFL, preseason games in the NFL. Yes, indeed, we have preseason games at the Hall of Fame game. Browns play their first game this weekend. That's all coming up. As you uh, probably can tell, I'm not feeling great, but I am here. Uh, couldn't do UCSS today. Won't be there tomorrow. I just uh, I was uh, just tested positive for COVID. Uh, minor symptoms at this point, but my throat's pretty scratchy and, and tired, and I'm just cold symptoms. Hopefully, it doesn't get any worse. But you can't catch COVID through the uh, camera, so that's good news for you. And uh, hope everybody's okay. It was a crazy day in Cleveland yesterday in all of Northeast Ohio. As that huge storm came through, there were tornado warnings, and we don't usually get any kind of real tornadoes in Northeast Ohio, but there were some crazy winds up to 80 miles an hour. There's a giant tree. Uh, I was going to show it to you on my phone, but it's, it's not, you know, I, I probably shouldn't do that. But there was a giant tree in the property behind mine that fell, and I was very lucky. Unfortunately, one of my neighbors, not as lucky, a uh, tree fell, uh, you know, one dire- if it had fallen in the other direction, it would have hit my house. Fell in another direction, hit a neighbor's house. Fortunately, they were all okay. Uh, nobody was in the house at the time, and it's hard to tell from from my house exactly how bad the damage is. But it was very scary. There's a lot of earth coming out of the ground, and uh, hopefully, everybody's okay out there. I know there's about four hundred thousand people without power throughout Northeast Ohio. So be safe, be careful. The roads are crazy. I drove around a little bit around Lakewood and Rocky River today, and there were street lights out all over the place. And uh, so crazy uh, 24 hours uh, in Northeast Ohio. Nice day today, and hopefully everybody's uh, safe, and hopefully the power will be back on as soon as possible uh, throughout the area. On a much lighter note, still waiting word on what's happening in terms of the trade. We know... Every day there's been reporting on this Brandon Ayuk situation. There was reporting over the weekend that the Browns and the Patriots had a deal in place and it was about negotiating the contract. At this point, that appears to be uh, inaccurate information that was put out over the weekend. It does seem like it's more of a fluid situation and that there really is no deal in place at the moment. Does it mean it's not close or things couldn't change? Um I, you know, at any moment we could see a move. It it does appear based on the the rumors that maybe the Steelers are in the lead, but but who knows honestly what the truth is. Um, and if he ends up on the Steelers, he ends up on the Steelers. Now, uh, I love. Let's see. Here's the latest. This just two minutes ago from Diana Rossini, the Pittsburgh Steelers, among along with other teams are in communication and still negotiating with the 49ers for Brandon Ayuk. No deal is done per sources. There was a report out of Pittsburgh. This, but who, who the hell knows what's going on? Um, but anyway, he's not a Cleveland Brown. Uh, there, I know somebody on, uh, what's her name? Uh, it was on uh, Get Up this morning. Uh, Kimberly Martin, I think it was, saying he doesn't want to play in Cleveland. I don't know if that's true or not. You know what? If Brandon Ayuk doesn't want to play in Cleveland, he's a dope, and who cares? Then, then don't trade for him. I, I mean, I, I, I'm sick of this. Uh, you know, I, I do feel like people here in Cleveland are very sensitive and look for slights sometimes when they're not there. But there's no doubt there is some sentiment uh, from some out there that that like to slight Cleveland, and it, I can't imagine there's anybody that spent any real time in this part of the country in Northeast Ohio that would slight Cleveland. That's the funny thing is the people that make take shots at Cleveland, we're an easy target here because of the, the failures of the sports teams for the most part and because of longtime jokes by comedians and whatever. But I would guarantee you that 99.99999% of people that have actually spent a decent amount of time in Northeast Ohio, whether it's living here or 
you know, whatever. You worked here temporarily. You went to school here, whatever it might be. I've never met a person that I can think of that lived in this area or spent a significant amount of time here as a visitor that didn't like the area. First of all, obviously, Cleveland is not a huge city, but in comparison to every city in America, it's on the larger end. And compared to most of the big cities in America, it's way more easy to negotiate. We don't deal with the crazy traffic of bigger cities. Now, there's some downside, right? The city uh, could be built up a little more. The the lakefront is not as nice as it should be. Yeah, those those are some negatives. But uh, if you look about, you know, you look at downtown Cleveland, you look at the flats and where they were 20 years ago, or or even I'll just say uh, 14 years ago. Is it 14? No, 13 years ago when I moved here, as we're coming up on my 13th anniversary as a Clevelander. I think Northeast Ohio is a great place to live. I've had opportunities to leave. I have no desire to leave. It's a great place to raise a family. There's a lot of great people. Yeah, there's some jerks, but there's some jerks everywhere. Uh, there's plenty to do. Uh, is Are there as many things to do as there are in New York and Chicago and Philly and Boston? Probably not, but I don't have to deal with the traffic of New York, Chicago, Philly, and Boston. And there's enough to do. It's not like we're, you know, Utica, New York, in the middle of nowhere, and no no disrespect to Utica, it, it's a nice small city that I uh, started my career at. But there's plenty to do here. And anyway, I don't want to go with, rant and rave anymore on that. I just think if Brandon Ayuk doesn't want to play here, screw him. Amari Cooper wants to play here. Hopefully that, you know, the, the fact that the rumors circled around Amari Cooper potentially being part of the trade and if, if – uh, you know what? If Brandon Ayuk doesn't want to play here, this is not a quarterback situation. Don't 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 make him an offer he can't refuse. He doesn't want to play here. Let him go play for the Steelers and have to catch passes from Russell Wilson. Good good luck with you there. Uh, I, I'm sick of this crap. Uh, if you don't want to be here, then don't be here. If the Browns, you know, the Browns wide receiving core is good. I'd love to have Brandon Ayuk. I do think he'd be their best receiver. He's he's four years younger than Cooper. I love Cooper though. I'd love to have all three. I don't think that's realistic. I, I, I would, in the end, trade Cooper to get Ayuk, but not if he doesn't want to be here, especially when I know Cooper does. So screw that, uh, and, and we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, it's nothing's a done deal yet. I don't buy that this is completely over for the Browns. I know, you, you know people here, uh, one or two reporters say, he doesn't want to play in Cleveland. Well, are they all getting that from him, or is, did one person say that, and now everybody's saying it? I don't know what the hell the truth is. And But if he doesn't want to be here, then screw him. Let, let him go somewhere else, and let, let's hope the Steelers lose a lot of games this year. I'm sick of the freaking Steelers and their quarterback situation. And, and, and if I were a player, I'd rather play for the Browns than the Steelers right now. I know the Steelers have been a much better organization. There's no debating that. I think the Browns are in a much better position to win than the Steelers are. It's that simple. We've talked to the Deshaun Watson stuff to death, and we'll continue to do it um, after this weekend. But uh, I, I still think, even with the question marks surrounding Deshaun Watson, I'd still much rather be a Cleveland Brown than a Pittsburgh Steeler right now. And uh, and I'm not going to be one of these jerks who says, don't pick on Cleveland, I'm going to pick on Pittsburgh. P no, Pittsburgh's a nice city. I haven't spent a ton of time at Pittsburgh. I've gone to some games there. It's they got a nice downtown. It's a similar city to Cleveland. It's, pro it's probably a nice place to live. Also, it's probably another good city. I'm not going to bash Pittsburgh, but I hate the Steelers. I got no, I got no beef with the Pirates. No beef with them, but I hate the Steelers. Their fans are obnoxious, and uh, I'm sick of people taking shots. And, and you taking shots at the team is fine. I mean, that's just part of sports. But to take shots at the city of Cleveland is weak and uneducated. And just not true. Most of the negative things people say about Cleveland are stupid. You're ignorant and you haven't spent time here. That's that's just simple for me. Um, the Browns, just in the last few minutes, put out a tweet. And here, here it goes. Uh, I'm going to retweet it now. You, you've probably seen it by the time you listen to the podcast or watch the podcast. The Browns say, a letter to Cleveland Browns fans ac across Northeast Ohio and beyond. And it's a picture of what appears to be in Brook Park with a giant indoor facility. Let me read you what the letter says. And this is just coming out in the last few minutes. 
It's been great hosting many of you at training camp in Berea, and we can't wait to see you at Cleveland Brown Stadium for what we believe will be an exciting season ahead. As you know, we have been hard at work on a long-term stadium solution to bring our fans the best-in-class experience they deserve while also positively impacting the Northeast Ohio region. The process began as far back as 2017, and our efforts have intensified as we approach the end of our current lease after the 2028 season. We know this is a topic that is important to our fans and the broader community. With Mayor Bibb releasing the city's latest proposal for a renovated stadium last week and the increased community dialogue around our stadium future, including the possibility of a dome stadium in Brook Park, we feel it is the appropriate time for us to communicate directly and share an update on our stadium process. We are currently evaluating the city's proposal and have requested additional information from the city to enable us to comprehensively do so. We do not take the stadium decision lightly and have been working diligently with city, county, and state officials to consider all opportunities. We need to be bold, we, we need to be innovative, and we need to take advantage of this unique moment to create a transformational project, not only for our fans, but for Cleveland, the Northeast Ohio region, and the state of Ohio. While we have considered numerous sites throughout Cleveland and the region, our focus has been on two potential paths for the future of our stadium. One option is the renovation of the lakefront. While our current stadium has served us well, it would need substantial improvements to ensure future sustainability and make it a state-of-the-art facility that makes Cleveland proud. The lakefront site also has significant operational limitations for a building of our size and requires major infrastructure moves to improve our operational and fan experience challenges. We have, and we have invested heavily in exploring this path and remain engaged with the city of Cleveland regarding a potential renovation plan, but it remains a complex and challenging proposition. The other and more transfer, uh, transformational option is to build a 2.4 billion new dome stadium in Brook Park, creating a modern, dynamic, world-class venue that would greatly enhance the fan experience and enable the state of Ohio and our region to compete for some of the biggest events in the world 365 days a year. Similar to other markets in the Midwest, this proposed dome stadium would catalyze, catalyze our region in a major way. Uh, the stadium's year-round activity would anchor a large-scale lifestyle and entertainment district, including experiential retail, residential space, hotels, and other unique products, drawing visitors throughout the year and driving substantial fiscal impact for our region. While significant work remains, the more we have explored the Brook Park option, the more attractive it has become, and we are excited to share the current vision with you. There's a video that they then have. It's a, it's a long video. I'm obviously not going to – I'm scanning through it real quick, and it's got some, you know, renderings of what the facility would look like. We have – back to the, what they said. We have considered not only the Brook Park site but also other locations for a future Dome Stadium, including Burke Lakefront Airport, which we have determined with the city of Cleveland is not feasible. We also cannot put a dome on the current building because of economic constraints and FAA restrictions. The Brook Park site is the most compelling option for a dome for several reasons. Its central location, location for our regional fan base, its proximity to downtown, the RTA, and the airport, and its strong existing infrastructure. The large footprint is also ripe for major economic development and supports ample parking and optimized ingress egress for our visitors. Our diligence of the site is ongoing, but our work to date has shown positive results on the FAA, environmental, and traffic infrastructure fronts. As demonstrated in other markets, a project of this magnitude only realistically works through a public-private partnership. Uh, that's where they say, well, yeah, we're not going to pay for the whole thing. So you got to cough up a lot of money. Now, listen, the renderings look amazing. I love the idea of a dome stadium. Don't get this wrong. Whatever they say in this letter, and I'll read you more, this is all about the Haslam family putting more money in their pockets. Now, they, they do want the fans to have a good experience, but it's going to come with a high price. People that have the cheaper seats in the current stadium are going to get priced out of this brand new stadium. If you're bare, if you can barely afford your tickets at the current stadium, you're probably not going to be able to afford tickets in the new one. Keep that in mind. And Jimmy Haslam, who's a multi-billionaire who could definitely afford uh, to pay uh, for this entire thing himself, says 
we, we want to do a public private. Yeah, of course, because you don't want to pay the whole thing. Uh, the it's it's insane. In the end, I know this is the way it always goes. It's insane that a billionaire gets his stadium paid ha- half of his stadium paid by by the common folk, who most most of will get nothing in return or little in return. Uh, I'll read the rest. He said we have approached this as a fifty fifty partnership. Does that mean we get fifty that the fans can get fifty percent of the money? excluding cost overruns, which we would cover. But this would be more than just a stadium project. It will also include a private development that, when combined with the world-class Dome Stadium, will be transformative for our region. I'm sure the housing there will be very affordable. The proposed $1.2 billion private investment in the stadium is unprecedented and will be the largest private per capita stadium investment ever in the country, and that does not include the approximately $1 billion privately funded uh, funded phase development we are envisioning, which would also be tremendously impactful on our region. I Would it? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if any of this stuff is true or not. This is what they're saying. Importantly, we are not looking to tap into existing taxpayer funded streams, okay, which could divert resources from other pressing needs. We are instead working on innovative funding mechanisms with local county and state officials that would leverage the fiscal impact of the of the project and the unprecedented private contribution to support the public investment and generate a substantial return for Brook Park, Cuyahoga County in the state of Ohio. We'll, we'll see when that's all said and done. But it'll be interesting to see what they're going to come up with. We've talked uh, uh, here on the new CSS about the pull tabs they used in Minnesota, gambling essentially. Will they use gambling money? New gambling uh, or marijuana just became legal for recreational use. So, you know, there you go. It could be. Uh, While still in progress, our funding model also contemplates setting aside future dollars generated by the project for stadium repairs and maintenance to help ensure long-term sustainability of the building well beyond the initial lease term. We are excited about the possibility of building a dome and surrounding development in Brook Park, the city of Cleveland, and the success of its downtown remain incredibly important to us. We acknowledge that a move to Brook Park may have near-term impact on downtown, but we believe that the year-round activity of a dome stadium can still positively impact the downtown economy, particularly when coupled with the possibilities of a reimagined lakefront absent the stadium. Again, this is possible. I know the businesses downtown are going to be frustrated. They're losing uh, 10 or more dates. Uh, There's not going to be people downtown when we see Browns games at home. There's tons of people downtown. That's not going to be the case anymore. the, The positive of nearby Brook Park hosting an indoor stadium with a major events that you can't do outdoors could be a difference maker. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea if, if it's going to help the city of Cleveland or not in the long run. They've been talking about reimagining the lakefront. Uh, that would be great. Will there be any affordable housing there? I have no idea. Developing the lakefront without the stadium could be the best way to maximize the long-term success of our underutilized North Coast waterfront asset. We continue to have dialogue with the city regarding the optimal use of the lakefront and will remain engaged on this critical priority regardless of where the stadium is. We will also keep working with our public partners in earnest so that the stadium solution is a long-term win for everyone, including the city of Cleveland. As we've begun to share this Brook Park Dome vision with elected officials, fans, and business and civic leaders, we've received overwhelmingly positive feedback. If it's that overwhelming, well, why don't you put this to the voters to see this should be on the ballot to see if people want to have a tax, a sin tax or whatever to go to this. And there, there is, I'm sure, listen, there's a lot of people that, that do want this. Uh, selfishly, I think it would be really cool. And I think a lot of people would be excited. Um, but I don't think it would pass on the ballot. And that's pretty shady that they're not doing that. We have also learned through every conversation, understand there is more input to be gathered, still significant work to be done. The city of Cleveland's effort to modernize Hopkins Airport, along with the reimagined lakefront and a world-class dome and development in Brook Park. Again, for those who are not from the area, maybe a Browns fan, Brook Park is right, you know, by the Cleveland airport, which is Brook Park is a suburb, but it's right next to Cleveland. It's not like the team is being, I saw somebody compare Jimmy Haslam doing this to, Art Modell, which is absurd. He took the team and moved them to Baltimore. This is moving them technically, I mean, 10, 15 minutes from downtown Cleveland, but uh, a couple of, uh, not even a mile from the city of, the technically the city of Cleveland. 
We will continue working diligently with Cleveland, Brook Park, county and state officials to capitalize on this generational opportunity. We know that you are passionate about this decision, and we thank you for your continued support of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Dave Jenkins, Haslam Sports Group. The pictures look amazing. The video all looks cool. I mean, the, the, what, they're, what they're envisioning here would be uh, an incredible monument. Hopefully, we'd get a Super Bowl here. Um, and, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. But clearly, you know, they say in the beginning of that, that letter that there's, they're not building a dome downtown. That we know. F- we pretty much knew that, but now we know that for sure. But they're, they're moving to Brook Park. This is happening. I know they say in the beginning of that letter that they're still considering the renovations to the current stadium. Uh, that's not going to happen. They are going to build a brand new stadium, and uh, that's it. So I, I, while there are some negatives about it, I think overall it's a positive for, the, for Northeast Ohio. Uh, but I know a lot of people are going to be angry. Most people are going to be thrilled. A lot of people are going to be angry about this, and uh, we'll see how it all shakes out. But it looks like in 2029... That would be the first year potentially that they'd be playing there five years from now. All right. Thanks for joining me as always. uh, We'll be doing the live show, assuming I'm able to physically. (laughs) I'm still feeling well enough with COVID to do the live show Thursday at two. Uh, Thanks to Shane for producing. Thanks to all of you for watching and listening. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm about 250 subscribers away from 5,000. Love to get there before my one year anniversary of the YouTube version of the podcast in a couple of weeks. Help me get there. Please hit the subscribe. Please give the thumbs up. Thank you, as always, for joining me. We'll talk to you next time. Where else but right here in the bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. See you, everybody.